This is your host, Zana, and welcome back to Slim Radio Seeking Survival. In the second episode, we will be talking about anti crack or in English, anti squat. This means that when a building is abandoned, the government hires a private company to come in and rent out the rooms in the building in order to avoid squatting. We will be talking to Mess, who is living in Leyden in an old office building, and to Leslie, who is living in an old primary school in Rotterdam. I'll see you there! Uh, my name is Mace van Hof, and at the moment I play professional basketball for a club here in Leiden. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us about the space where you're living right now? Yeah, the space I live in, uh, I rent it from a company which um, buys or rents buildings uh, to anti crack buildings, yeah. which are like old office buildings that are empty, and they rent them so that um, students or people can move into the building at times when it's empty. So there are certain times when the government or the company doesn't really know what to do with the building. Mm-hmm if they want to like destroy it and rebuild something else or renovate the building. So uh, in the time being, while that is being decided and the building is still empty, people can come in here and prevent it from being cracked, as they say in Dutch. Yes, yes, okay. And when did you move here? Uh, I moved here in August of last year. Mm-hmm. And why did you decide to come here instead of like a regular apartment, I guess? Uh, well, because... Um, with anti crack comes the kind of uncertainty that you might get evicted if plans go through really quickly and they suddenly have a plan for the building right. that all white and then all the people have to move out. But that also makes it a lot cheaper. Mm-hmm. So for example, this room was um, relatively a lot cheaper than other possible housings in Leida, and for the price, I also got quite a lot more space than I would also normally get for the same price definitely so it was just uh for me like a really good combination and as someone who probably only wants to live in Leiden for about a year or mm-hmm. only needed housing for about a year this was the perfect combination for me nice and um how did you get to know about this place what was the application process um i just looked online for housing in Leiden, just general housing yeah. and then i came across the company name um just through like some uh, simple google searches mm-hmm. And the application was relatively simple, but I did have to fill in a lot of forms, like um, proving that you're able to pay rent and that sort of stuff, okay. and declaring that you're like a good person type of thing. <laughs> and you had, had to write a motivation letter of why they should let you in, because there's actually like quite a big waiting list uh, to move into some of these buildings. Because uh-huh. like I said earlier, it's just like a really cheap alternative. Right. And most of the time you get a lot more space than normal housing. So it's quite attractive for young people or uh, students or just people just working um, mm-hmm. or just starting their first jobs or something. Yeah. So the wait list is quite long. So you, they okay. kind of pick and choose through like motivation letters and uh, that sort of thing. You got lucky. Yeah, <laughs> I got lucky. <laughs> exactly. Good. Yeah. And uh, is this your first time doing anti-crack? Yeah, this is my first time. Okay. Okay. How's it going so far? Do you like it? Yeah, I actually really like it. Yeah. Um, we live together in, uh, in this building with about 90 people. And they're all pretty young students or uh, just like in their mid-20s, just starting mm-hmm. their first jobs, like I said. We also have a couple of common areas and we do a couple of activities still while having the option to socially distance in these times. Because the building is just really big and we have a lot of space for going right. around. But it's still really nice as well to, one, live in the center of Leiden for the price that I'm paying right yeah. now. And two, just still being able to have the social aspect because... If you want, you can always just find people and still hang out or have dinner together, that type of stuff. Can you tell me more about the history of the building? You said it's an office building, Yeah, right? I, I'm not 100% sure, but okay. I, I think it's uh, an old government office building. Mm-hmm. One part was for the government um, that they used, and then a couple of other companies were in there as well. But I'm not 100% sure. Right. And what does it look like right now? So the ground floor is um, has various kind of office spaces. And they're all individually being rented out as extra office space for companies. Yeah. So companies just uh, can come in here and rent a, a little room, like a couple square meters, and uh, work from the, their kind of new office from there. And then we have three floors above that with rooms like mine, and some are really big and some are quite a bit smaller. Mm-hmm. But those are all just inhabited by people renting from the company, basically. And then we have uh, one really big common area on, up on the third floor, third floor 
where we have a big shared kitchen as well and yeah. um like a pool table and table tennis table and nice. just a place to hang out on the weekends and that sort of thing mm -hmm. which is really nice yeah how do you um relate to your housemates how do you feel about them i don't know yeah I, it's actually really great Uh, yeah, yeah every, everybody here especially has been super accepting, super open and just very social as well. Mm -hmm. But it's also kind of nice that if you really wanted to, you could kind of retract into your own room and okay. stay inside your own little bubble. Does the idea that you might get evicted uh, like scares you or bothers you in some ways? Um, in my situation, personally, it doesn't really scare me too much. Also, because we kind of heard... Um, through like the government sometimes we talk to the company and stuff yeah. that plans aren't like really on their way right now for okay. the building so normally that takes a long time and for me especially because i'm planning on moving out in the summer mm -hmm. as well i'm not really scared because i really don't think the chances are high that in the next month or two suddenly like plans are coming so fast that right. we get evicted before I would like to. So would you recommend this sort of experience to other people? Yeah, for sure. Especially younger people. Um, mm -hmm. If they have some trouble with finances or whatever, or just maybe even want to save up money because it's such a cheap alternative as well. And uh, like I said, the social aspect is just so great. And it's just a great way to find new people, meet yeah. new people, hang out with. And yeah, it's definitely a recommendation for other for people. For sure. How do you feel about the housing situations in general in big cities of the Netherlands? I feel like there's a really big shortcoming in housing, or if there are possible housings, especially for younger people, because most young people tend to move to the bigger cities mm -hmm. in the Netherlands, that's just not affordable or sustainable. Right. Um, I feel like Leiden has the problem as well, and Amsterdam for sure has the problem, and cities like Rotterdam and The Hague, yeah. even though I'm not personally acquainted with i can probably imagine yeah. <laughs> that they have like a lot of housing problems as well mm -hmm. yeah i think it's really difficult with super long wait lists and just expensive prices um that's really difficult for students especially mm -hmm. and younger people to find places so mm -hmm. i don't know what the direct solution would be but okay. maybe <laughs> anti-crack is a solution for some students that exactly, are looking for, sure. for a cheap place yeah for sure it is <laughs> well thank you very much for You're having welcome. us yeah. uh, I'm Leslie Harbour. I work for customer service for Enable right now. Uh, from home, of course, because of like the coronavirus and all. Yes. Um, I used to do a lot of uh, horeca work, so working in restaurants in the service industry. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, of course, that stopped, so now I'm here. Okay. And how long have you been living here? Um, about two and a half years now, I think. Uh, at least two years. Uh -huh. They told us we could stay for two to three years. Can you tell us more about the history of this building? What is it? Um, for as far as I know, it used to be a school. There used to be like three of them in this uh, square. Mm -hmm. um, but I think one burned down because oh. of some firework incident. So that was like really nice news to hear uh, okay. when I moved in here. You know, like <laughs> the first uh, New Year's Eve was kind of like, mm, let's keep all the windows closed, you know. Uh, I think it was built around 1980. Mm -hmm. um, which means it's kind of old building. Yes. Uh, it survived like the Second World War bombing and shit. So, <laughs> um, yeah, okay. used to be an elementary, elementary school. school. Yeah, you can see that from my room. It's like quite big. Yes. And even has some soundproof wall things on the <laughs> <laughs> hung up. So uh, I yeah. Know. And uh, how many Mutual. people are living here apart from you? Uh, three other people. Um, two other guys from like in, the, in their 40s. Mm -hmm. um, so I have this friend of mine that like uh, helped me come into this place, but he was the one that was like really messy, really dirty, okay. like he would leave everything like messed up. Um, so they kicked him out. Then there was this other girl. Yep. She left maybe after a couple of months. And oh. now there's another girl. And she's quite alright. And is it through like an association? Because. Yeah, yeah it's, from Cam it's from Camelot. It's like. Um, all right. It's an association, we have a couple in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. and it's basically, um, they take old buildings uh, like this that are empty and just put people in there as like a uh, security measure so people won't squat in empty buildings, you know. And <coughs> what was your experience so far with living in Antikrak? 
Well, you get what you pay for, of course. Mm -hmm. um, you get like a big room. They have kind of service, but as you can see, there's like a couple crack windows. Yeah. And I've been, I told them about it ever since I came here, but they never fixed it. Uh, what's it called? Like the heating elements don't work properly. No, the best. Sometimes <laughs> it will be, I would come home, it would be like a sauna. Yeah. And then during the night, they would all be off. Super cool. Right? <laughs> like okay. with no reason. And um, why did yeah. you decide to live here? Instead of a you know, normal apartment? Um, it's cheaper. Yeah. yeah it's kind of hard to find like a proper housing you know, not too far from the cent uh, city center. Um, so yeah, it's like a 20 minute walk from here, mm -hmm. which is not that far, you know. Nice. Um, yeah, maybe even good. on my speed, it's maybe 15 minutes, you know. <laughs> so yeah, maybe that's, that's like the main reason for me to okay. stay here. Yes. Yeah. And what about kitchen and stuff? You don't have a... I have a small sink here in the back. Sink? But, yes. Um, don't film because I didn't clean. You know? <laughs> it's um, okay. And it's like, just like the, uh, just like the toilet, it's like really small. It's mm -hmm. like knee height. Okay. So, Sometimes I just sit there with a seat, washing, <laughs> washing dishes, so my back just gives out. <laughs> Everything for small elementary school children, I guess. Yeah, right? right? Like they come from outside, they have to wash their hands, so like <laughs> they have to reach the sink. Would you recommend doing anti crop to other people, mm, since this mm. has been a pretty e positive experience, I well, guess? Well, yeah, I've heard from people that had like less positive experiences, like um, the call single in Rotterdam. Yeah. Like a really big anti crack student complex type thing, but the security there was trash. And oh. just like vagrants would just like walk in, homeless people would just walk in. Someone that was renting out uh, a room there yeah. uh, burnt his mattress, and basically the whole building had to be evicted. And yeah, it was a huge mess. Oh. A huge mess. It was like, uh, it was basically next to Stadt House. Yeah. And do you think? Uh, this kind of like this way of living is you know doable for most people maybe students how do you feel about it oh of course for students so as you can see like two older guys also live here like mm -hmm. um, the one living next to me even has kids coming his kids coming over sometimes mm -hmm. sleeping over even yeah. I guess um, it's doable like which is just like I said, like it's you get what you get, uh, what you pay for, you know. Right. Like, uh, yeah. It's not well, much. a pretty big room, I mm. must say. Yeah, of course, that's and nice. it's just like three hundred euros a month. Uh huh. And yeah, that's it. Like no extras. Oh wow, that's cheap. Right. Nice. But, uh, yeah, I had to fix my own internet and shit, but that's oh, it. Exactly. But it was really hard here because we have no normal input. Oh. I had this, they had this big surfer, and I'm lucky enough that it's like next to my room, you know. Uh huh. Um, so I had to pull a cord all the way from there, reach <laughs> around my door. If you realize that you get what you pay for, yeah. it's going to be positive. Like, if you don't expect too much, like you can really lose too much. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, like the um, housing situation in the Netherlands and in big cities like Amsterdam and Rotterdam mm -hmm. is kind of messy at the yeah, moment. Yeah, right. And <coughs> how do you feel about it? I feel like mm. it's hard for people to find a p affordable place, right? Well, yeah, of course, like, it's kind of the natural way of things to go. Mm -hmm. um, especially when you look at, like, other countries, uh, Western countries mostly, like, yeah. the city centers will get, like, gentrified and all the bullshit, like, everything will get um, basically uh, thrown down, new flats will pa pa rise up. Um, everything will just get more expensive mm -hmm. the more people come to your city or to your uh, country of course so it's always been like that ever since uh, Rotterdam was raised basically it was built and everything mm -hmm. Rotterdam South has been a place where people would get like pushed out to and now uh, it's basically the same actually people again get pushed out to South mm -hmm. or uh, further, further out outside of the city you know? so um, it's normal to see that happening because mm -hmm. there's more um, things you could do inside of the city uh, with of course would like raise the uh, property of the housings. Uh -huh. So would you think Antikirk is a good uh, solution for people that don't live it that big you know like yeah. don't live that big like you can still live affordable pretty close to the city house. and yeah comfortable I wouldn't necessarily say so but <laughs> okay why why not comfortable? Um, well, of course, it's just an old building. They don't really uh, do anything about maintenance. Um, I think like when I fir the first year I lived here around uh, December, New Year's Eve, 
mm -hmm. Christmas that period. Uh, I think I had a power outing, and it took so long before they really uh. fixed it. You know, like th those type of stuff. Like uh, it's annoying. Um, and I've had people to come to my window when I asked them to not kick a ball against the window. Yeah. Like, yeah, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to live here. Save that type of stuff. Okay. And then. Okay. Just those type of situations. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, just people not understanding what it really means to live in a building like this. Yeah, and if you had to, um, like, give some tips to someone that wants to start doing anti-crack, like living in a place similar to this. Most of the times, you have to know someone to get in. Oh. You know, uh, I know for one uh, one anti-crack uh, so business, whatever you want to call it, uh, ad hoc. Mm -hmm. um, also on the website, it says like you have to be invited in. So oh, and for okay. me, it was basically the same. I mean, like yeah, you had your friend. The friend knew the, one of the guys who was working for uh, Camelot. Yeah, I think like you should also uh, be careful uh, with what company you do business yeah. uh, in the anti crack section. Oh. Well, I've read a lot about Camelot in Belgium. Mm -hmm. Mm, that they had like rooms rented out to people with like no electricity, no warm oh. water, fucking rats and shit. Like uh, I think they almost lost their license in the Netherlands also because of that. Yeah, I don't know. For me, it's just like home. So yes, that's that, good. It's not that different from a normal apartment. Yeah. Except for the small details. All right. Well, thank you very much for this interview. No and problem. Yes. <laughs> Hi. So here's everything you need to know about anti-crack in the Netherlands. Just keep your expectation realistic and maybe, just maybe, you'll find a place to call home. Thanks again to Mess and Leslie and we will be seeing you guys in the next episode of Seeking Survival. Bye!